little bit, but uh, everything that we do is going to be uh, hopefully to glorify God here. And with that in mind, would you please stand as we sing this first song, and then we'll have a prayer. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is the great I Am. Lord Jehovah reigns in majesty. We will bow before his throne. We will worship him in righteousness. We will worship him alone. He is Father God, what a blessing it is to be here today, and we just are so thankful to be gathered as your family. We know that we have been together in spirit, and we have uh, continued to love and be concerned for one another, but it's just such a blessing to be together, whatever the circumstances, whatever the distance that we have to keep. We're just so thankful that we could come together and sing hallelujah to your name, to praise you, to look into your word. And uh, as much of a blessing as we have right now, we also have a cloud that has uh, gathered over us. And we just come to you right now, Father, in groanings too deep for words, that the unrest and the injustice and the difficulties that we uh, are seeing in this world, in our country, have ask your blessing on them and that we would uh, pray that any uh, evil thought or any um, uncertainty or any frustration just right now be taken from the hearts of, of those that are causing problems, of those that are suffering and we just pray for Um, your light to shine in this time and we pray that you would use us to uh, be lights for Christ in the world and we just ask uh, your blessing for healing and for peace and we pray Father that as we gather that our As we gather, as we sing, as we pray, that our joy would would, um, build and be evident and would uh, strengthen your body. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Number, oh, I guess you don't need the number, do you? 679. (laughs) We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, we are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, and we pray that our unity may one day be restored, and then know we are Christians by our love, by our love.
I'm getting a bottle of water. Good morning, everyone. It is good to see each of you. Now, I've been told that it is acceptable for me to take off my mask. I'm far enough away according to the guidelines. And uh, I know that this Sunday would not be complete if you were robbed of the opportunity to see my beautiful face. Oh, yeah, we wanted to go this way, right? There we go. All right, so we're, we're still working through, as you can tell, a few moving parts here with uh, the technology. Um, we are live streaming, and uh, we're doing it on Facebook, and we have been doing it on YouTube, but apparently we've had an issue with our YouTube feed this morning, and uh, so we apologize for that. We'll try to, we'll try to ascertain uh, the reason for that. Uh, at a little later, didn't have enough time to try to to try to correct that between now and um, what did I do with the? There it is. Like I said, there are a lot of moving parts. But it is good for us to be together, amen. And uh, it is good to see each of you. You have been in my prayers uh, continuously. And um, this, is, this has been a hard time for us on so many different levels. And uh, our prayers continue to be for, for all of those who are suffering uh, as a result of uh, this, uh, this pandemic. And um, hopefully, uh, before long, we will see things go back to a little bit of uh, normalcy. This morning I was uh, thinking about what, you know, what would be an appropriate topic for us as we come together after so many weeks of being apart. And it seems to me that this theme right here is perfect for this occasion. And as uh, things have unfolded in recent days, I think it has even become more pertinent. But we are one. In the book of Ephesians, and the fourth chapter, verses 4 through 6, Paul writes, There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. Paul was writing to deal with, well, he was writing to encourage Christians to, to realize the blessings that they had in Christ Jesus. His letter begins with a reminder that every spiritual blessing is found in Christ Jesus. And one of those blessings is the unity that was achieved between people in coming together under the banner of of Christ under in the shadow of the cross having all been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ and one of the messages that you find as a recurring theme in scripture is a a message that talks about unity that talks about oneness that talks about the blessing of it as as you read through uh, the New Testament epistles, it seems like nearly every single epistle addresses the need for the people of God to be one. And sometimes it's as a reminder to keep up the good work in having a unified front and demonstrating the kind of character that speaks of better things to a world that is filled with not so good things. And sometimes it is written as an encouragement to do better because the particular recipients of that letter were not really demonstrating that they were one. And as a result, it was a poor reflection on 
Christ, the one whom they called Lord, whom they were following. The world is watching. And they need to see in us, they need to see the love of God being shared with one another. And so in the 133rd Psalm, the psalmist says, A song of a sense of David, of a sense of David. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron running down on the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing life forevermore. And so the psalmist, this song of ascents, this is talking about going to Jerusalem. This is talking about going to, to participate in one of the festivals, one of the things that were required of Israel to come to, come to Jerusalem uh, several times a year. And so the, the children of Israel would be on their way to be in the presence of God in the temple, but also with one another. There is something important and precious we see it even in the old testament about the the beauty of unity there are so many different things obviously that we could we could describe as as the beauty but but he uh, he attaches it to the lord's blessings of of the anointing of Aaron as the high priest of the the blessings of the dew that that come from the mountains that that water the plains and provide the sustenance of life that provide a cool refreshment from the heat of the day and the, the difficulties of life. Over and over we are reminded that, that God has always determined, always had in his plan that there be a people who are gathered together to enjoy his blessings, but also to share his blessings with others. And as we come together again, after this period of time separated, even though I see a lot of masks, I think I see some smiles. What a blessing it is for us to be together. But being together is more than simply being physically in, in presence with one another. And so throughout Scripture, we also find a, a solemn warning uh, in the book of Proverbs in chapter 6 and verse 19 that one of the things that, that God hates or that is an abomination to him is a false witness who speaks lies and one who sows discord among brethren. And, the, and so just as there is the recurring theme of the blessings of unity and togetherness, there are nearly as many, if not more, I haven't actually taken the time to go and count, but warnings about what God thinks of the behaviors that serve to sow discord. Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, blessed are the peacemakers. And you and I are called to be at peace with one another. And certainly there are going to be times when, when we aren't all exactly on the same page. I know it will come to, as a surprise to you that I'm not perfect. Okay, that was a little too much of a laugh. <laughs> I love it. Um, now, I'm, I'm, I'm not perfect. That doesn't come as a surprise to anyone. And, and so sometimes you have to put up with me. And sometimes I have to put up with you. <laughs> because you're not perfect either. And, and then, there are, then there are some who, for whatever reasons that... Maybe it's low self-esteem, maybe it's desire for power, maybe whatever it is. There are some people who just, just like to kind of stir things up. And God says, that's not who we are called to be. And, you know, right now we're, we're living in a time where we see, you know, a lot of discord in the world. Now, in some respects, it's not much different than it has ever been. It has always been the case. When people of the world go about their normal business. I don't know if you read my, my bulletin article this morning. Um, but, 
you know, we talk about getting back to normal, but for some, normal is not good. We, we, we often think about normal. I get a call from the doctor, and the doctor says, all of your test results are normal. I think we all like to hear that. That means healthy. But sometimes what's normal isn't healthy. It's not good. And, and for, for some, not working towards peace, not working towards unity, not working towards oneness, divisiveness is normal and that's not healthy and so on the one hand we have scripture saying this is the goal this is pleasant this is beautiful this is what we need to be aiming for and on the other hand there is the warning be careful that you don't stir things up and part of the reason is because we have been given a serious purpose in this world in John chapter 17 in verses 20 and 21, Jesus is on his way to the cross. And he is praying. Some people refer to the prayer that Jesus, you know, our, you know, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Some people refer to that as the Lord's Prayer. I think this is really the Lord's Prayer. That prayer was teaching his disciples the elements how to pray but here we see Jesus really praying in earnest and one of the things that he is praying for as he is preparing to go to the cross one of the things that he says is this I do not pray for these alone but also for those who will believe in me through their word have you ever stopped to think that Jesus has prayed for you? Well, right here, he was praying for you. Because if you're here this morning, it is quite likely that you are here because you believe in Jesus Christ. And the only way you came to believe is through the words of the apostles that have been recorded for us in Scripture. So even before, even as Jesus is going to the cross, he was thinking about you. He was thinking about me. And what he thinks is, what he prays is, is that they all may be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us. Why? That the world may believe that you sent me. What the world needs more than anything else in the world is Jesus. And Jesus, as he prayed for his disciples and as he prayed for you and me, it was that we would be the kind of people who in our relationships with one another, in our interactions in the world, that we would be a beacon of hope and light, and we would point the way to Jesus. Because that's why we have been called. That is my purpose here on this earth. This is your purpose as a disciple of Christ, is to point people to to Jesus that's a very serious purpose it is also a grand and glorious calling and at the same time it should cause us to tremble at the magnitude of what we have been given at the stakes that are involved quite literally life and death is involved and all of that is tied up in this concept of us being one, of us being unified, of us being able to portray that better way. So we've been given a serious purpose, and, and there is reason for us to do that because we serve a sovereign Lord. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord. Jesus is Lord. 
and truly if Jesus is Lord then we are as Paul prefaces this this passage of scripture let's let's read a little bit earlier and this isn't on the screen and I apologize because some of you may have you normally use pew Bibles but um, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called with all lowliness and gentleness with long suffering bearing with one another in love endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace that's the preface to the scripture reading that has served as the basis for our thoughts this morning endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit Jesus the son God the father the spirit are not divided and when he called us he called us to unity in him Jesus asked a question once he says why do you call me Lord Lord and do not do the things which I say and of course we can find all kinds of things that Jesus says and there are, there are many uh, expectations and restrictions in scripture for those who would be followers of Christ but here is one of the things that the Lord has said the Lord has said if you're going to be my follower then you're going to work towards unity. You're going to seek, you're going to endeavor to maintain it. And that's kind of an interesting thing, maintaining something. How many of you own a house? Do you maintain it? Uh, what happens if you don't maintain it? It falls apart eventually. It breaks. Things start to deteriorate. And I don't know if you've ever thought about that. There's kind of an active participation in all of this about us working together. And the world needs to see that. The world needs it more than ever. And we do so because we not only have a sovereign Lord, but a single Father, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in We have one Father. We come from different families. We come from different places. Different nationalities, different races. Different socioeconomic backgrounds. You know, Paul was writing in, in Ephesians, and, and often there was this, um, you know, this tension that existed between Jew and Gentile believers. There was, uh, you know, a big emphasis placed on that. And there was indeed the serious possibility of disruption of fellowship. And yet, Paul brings it back and says, wait a minute, you are a family. That's really the, the language that's involved here. There is one Father. We all are children of God. We all are brothers and sisters in Christ. I really think that that is one of the most important and, and powerful images that we find of, of the church is that we are family. Every single one of us who are washed in the blood of Jesus, we are family. But even beyond that, we, and, and, and I think this is part of the intent of this, it's not just to say, well, we're family because we're in the blood of Christ. God created each and every one of us. We are all created in the image of God, whether we are members of the body or not. And one of the things to consider is that everyone who is outside of the body of Christ, outside of that relationship of God through Christ, is actually wanted by God, is a potential brother or sister in Christ. And so the, so the image that is presented for us is, is that we are supposed to be presenting to the world an image of love and peace and harmony and active goodwill. And as we do that, 
as we do that, we are providing an alternative to the way things exist. You know, um, Esther is an interesting narrative that we find in Scripture. And there was a, there was a point kind of, of where she had to make a decision. And it was uncomfortable. It was dangerous. It may have even been life or death. And Mordecai says, well, who knows if but perhaps you have come to the kingdom. You are in this position. God has put you here for just such a time as this. Now, I think that's kind of an interesting thing because Mordecai doesn't say, oh, I got a message from God, and he told me that this is your job, Esther. Mordecai put it in a, in a broader kind of principle that I think we all ought to consider as an operating principle in our lives. That wherever we are, whatever circumstance we face, whatever situation that we are in, it is an opportunity to glorify God. It is an opportunity to bring life and peace and healing, and it is an opportunity to provide an alternative for those who are caught up in something else. Our world has been rocked. Our televisions have been filled nonstop with, this, with just horrible news. I kind of debated putting these images up there. Because they're heartbreaking. We ought to be disturbed to our core as we examine this world filled with so much that is evil and unjust with the violence and the hatred but maybe we need to see it as a time for us to really shine in a divided hate filled confused and hurting world. We are to be beacons of light, love, understanding, peace, and hope. It begins with how we interact with one another. We show folks that there is a better way. And as we have opportunity to talk about the events of the day, let's not forget that always we are representing our Lord. And man, there are so many different things that just come to, come to bear in all of this. I'm not naive to the realities of all of the different things that come to play. But we can all agree that much of what we see here is evil. And there are people who would like to take advantage of it for evil purposes, to sow further discord, further disharmony, further disunity. But you and I, children of the same father, who also is the father of the people represented on that screen and who wants to be in a relationship with them. You and I 
have an opportunity to lead the way in how we love one another and in how we love the world and how we display the love of Jesus in our own lives and hearts. I don't pretend to know how all of that's going to look. Every one of us, our situation and our lives are different. But God knows this is not good. And we need to be beacons of light. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I, I, my, I hope my tone is not lecturing or hectoring. It's just, I'm kind of, I'm kind of uh, reminded of the psalm, the 69th psalm. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. I have come into deep waters where the floods overflow me. I am weary with my crying. My throat is dry. My eyes fail while I wait for my God. It's not hopeless, and this psalm does not end in a hopeless message. But it seems to me that there are a lot of people who are feeling that right now, and they have no hope because they don't know Jesus. And so the encouragement that I give for all of us is let's try in every avenue that we have to point people to Jesus. He saved us, and he can save them. And you and I, together, can build one another up and enjoy the fellowship of being the children of God and we can bring some light into this world and so that is my prayer for each and every one of us that we as one will glorify God if you need to respond to the invitation of Jesus to have your broken heart healed to have your sin forgiven to restore your relationship with God or someone else, then we stand ready to assist you. Just let us know as we stand and sing.
come to that time in our service that I've really been looking forward to sharing with you all. Let me get to my pages that I've got in the Bible marked here. Um, we take this time to remember Jesus, to think about him, to think about something that he's done for us, the best thing that he ever did for us. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting in verse 23, it says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night that in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Now, really quick, one little manner of business. Did everybody who's taking the Lord's Supper this morning receive one of these? And if you didn't, please raise your hand. Ben can bring, okay, I think we have a couple up here, Ben, too. Um, he'll bring those to you with gloved hand, of course. Um, so we read this. Um, if you need it, raise your hands again really quick. Ben? Okay. Um, Jesus is asking us to remember him for something. He's asking us to remember a suffering that he went through. And I know at this time, in these times, these days, we're all a little stressed. But the people in this room, the people who belong to God, have something very special at this time. And we've already referred back a few times to the Psalms, and I'm going to go back there one more time this morning. In Psalm 18, in verse 2 and 3, we see the words of David, somebody who trusted God with all of his heart, somebody who certainly faced trials, temptations, and difficulties that probably make whatever we're going through now seem pretty minor. There were a lot of people who wanted to kill him, one in particular. They chased him, they dogged him. They made his life kind of a wreck for a while. And through all of that time, these would be the words of David. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. In these uncertain times, we certainly have a lot of enemies out there right now. Things that are upending our lives in many ways. But the Lord is our rock. The Lord is our fortress. And the reason he is our rock and our fortress, and we come together now to take this bread and this fruit of the vine, is in these words. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So we remember Jesus now. We remember his suffering. And we are reminded through this meal of the hope that we have today and for all of the future. Let's pray. Father, we come before you now as we are preparing to share in this communion.
Father, we've looked forward to doing this together for some time now, and we're so happy to be back here together to share this. We pray that you would bless us as we remember Jesus, remember his body on the cross, the pain that he suffered, and the hope that we have because he was willing to give his body for us. We pray, Father, at this time that you would bless this bread as we partake of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's pray. Father, we come to you now also as we prepare to take this fruit of the vine. We ask you to bless it to us and help us to remember the forgiveness that we have because your son shed his blood on the cross for us. Please bless this cup to us. In Jesus' name. Daryl provided us with an important message this morning, and part of that message was that we have a responsibility to be sharing this, the message of this communion with the world, that Jesus died for us, that there is a salvation available to all people. And part of the way that we do that is through our giving. This is all so weird right now, and I do look forward to being back to something that's a little bit more what we're used to. Um, we do have opportunity to give uh, for obvious reasons that I don't need to explain. We're not going to pass a plate this morning. Uh, we have a few opportunities or f a few ways that we can continue to uh, fulfill our responsibility to give as we've been prospered, to give as we've purposed in our hearts. Um, there is a box back in the lobby where you can deposit your contribution on the way out. Um, you can certainly mail it in or drop it off. Um, and as many of you, I'm sure, are aware, there are some online options to do that as well. Um, and if you need more details about that, please ask Daryl because I'm no good at that kind of stuff. But at this time, I would like us to pray for the church and for the support that we give and that our support is effective. Let's pray. Father, we thank you at this time for so many ways that you've blessed us, the greatest of which, of course, is Christ and his shed blood and salvation that he brings to us. But Father, we also thank you for helping us through these times, for supporting us, for allowing us to support each other. And at this time, Father, we wanna pray that you would bless us as we give we pray that our contribution would be used in the wisest way to be the most effective at spreading your word to the world. And Father, help us all to find ways, however we can, to help spread your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
what a blessing it was to be here today. And uh, we just want to close out with uh, one final song, and then we'll have a prayer. If you would, go ahead and be standing as we sing. And uh, oh, uh, I knew you couldn't. I, so in, in view of uh, the, the request for us to try to maintain social distancing, when you leave today, um, if you're on this side, if you'll exit that way and work your way around and out, and if you're over here, you'll work your way over, go exit the pews that side, and then just try to maintain the social distancing and uh, hopefully this will be a short-lived thing. But um, anyway, thank you for your cooperation in that regard. Verses 1, 2, and 4. <laughs> Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above before our father's throne we pour our pardon prayers our fears our hopes our God, we're so thankful for this time. We're thankful for our church family here. We're thankful for such loving hearts, such um, faith in you. And we pray that uh, our faith would be strengthened. Father, we pray that as we talked about in the lesson, that we should be showing Christ to those around us, that we should be um, actively preaching your word, act actively showing your word in our lives. And Father, right this now, right this time, we have a request to pray for first responders, for those in emergency services, those in medical services those in the National Guard, the, uh, the police, fire departments, and, and build them up. Uh, we know that, that uh, they are struggling emotionally with these times. We pray that uh, you would take away their fears and that you would keep them safe. Father, we ask prayers on those that have lost loved ones, for our sister Diana, for the uh, Lake and Cisco families. We are and how always have been encouraged by the faith of Bill, the faith of Ron, and their uh, service to you. And we just pray that um, their families will be comforted. So many others, Father, that are sick, struggling, concerned, um, afraid, that uh, we just know that, that uh, you know, we ask your comfort, your healing, and your strength on each one. Please bless us as we leave and keep us safe throughout the week, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.